the handwriting on the screen by carl schmidt from everybody's magazine volume thirty six january to june nineteen seventeen this recording is in the public domain reading by matt perard there are those who contend that the ideal screenplay will be acted from beginning to end without a single subtitle of comment or explanation douglas fairbanks thinks differently no sooner had he disposed of his court troubles a suit for violation of contract than he engaged at once an expert subtitle writer anita Luz, to do the scenarios for the pictures he is to bring out himself time and again said mr fairbanks i have sat through plays with miss Luz and have heard the audience applaud her subtitles as heartily as the liveliest scenes this has convinced me of the great value of the kind of work she does miss Luz took up subtitle writing largely because it was found that her scenarios when filmed or shot as the movie phrase has it had lost much of their originality it was generally agreed that her scripts were better than the pictures they made the scenario might seem to be unusual the picture had less point bit by bit parts of the scenarios found their way onto the screen as subtitles and thus an incidental part of miss lou's work began to dominate during the run of a famous pantomime backstage was said to have been made lively in the intermissions by the professional bickerings of performers whose work deprived them of speech it was as if the actors needed this outlet for curbed tongues nor does the enforced silence of the screen make marionettes of the players who face the camera through their press agents they not only talk much but often in a new language most persons know something of this lingo of the studios many are familiar with the ghastly close-up and know that the director is a czar-like stage manager who can crush or create careers at will only to the initiated is it given to no continuity locations cut-ins dissolves fade-outs iris in titles and subtitles the subtitle has only been in vogue a few years it differs from the title the wording between scenes which describes the action of the picture that is to come in that it need not attend to business it is meant only for the audience and though at times in the supposed speech of the characters in the film it may be a mere comment outside the picture and addressed to the audience like the aside of our father's theater titles and subtitles get the undivided attention of the audience often in the spoken drama a humorous line is lost because of the distraction of many things no one may miss lines on the screen in the birth of a nation and in intolerance most of the trouble was caused by subtitles a single one in the latter film a paraphrase by anita luce of a quotation from voltaire caused a protest from the club women of los angeles and aroused pennsylvania's easily agitated censors anita luce has not only written subtitles for griffith's pictures but she has written many for douglas fairbanks triumphant crusades against villainy my most popular subtitle introduced the name of a new character confessed miss luce the name was something like this count then there was a note to those of you who read titles aloud you can't pronounce the count's name you can only think it thus it will be seen how little the subtitle need fit into the story a subtitle writer wields an editorial influence and like writing for the press this part of writing on the screen is especially ephemeral in the course of a fairbanks film doug as all the world knows him quells a score or more of rioting workmen by telling them a funny story this gave miss Luce her opportunity to write in moving letters we'd like to let you in on this but it takes doug himself to put it over in the lore of the theatres there is a tale that officers six 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 which went lamely in rehearsals when played as a melodrama 
scored a success on the first night because the actors changed the play to a farce. According to Miss Luce, this is not infrequently done in the movies. Often, a script intended for drama has become comic by the invention of subtitles that kitted the story. Miss Luce has not only written subtitles, she has written many scenarios. In fact, her introduction to the movies was through a scenario sent east when she was still a schoolgirl. Though it does not cover many years, the career of Anita Luce is full of surprises. I began to write early, she confided, and I think I have one distinction. The first things I wrote were for a New York newspaper column called All Round Manhattan, or something of the sort. I wonder would the editor have taken my work had he known I hadn't been out of California and wasn't destined to see New York until years later. I have always had a lot of first luck. I sold my first writing, my first vaudeville sketch, my first scenario. Just now I sold my first short story. Griffith put on my first scenario, The New York Hat, with Mary Pickford and Lionel Barrymore. I suppose I wrote two hundred scenarios before I saw the inside of a studio, and until I went to see Griffith at the Triangle Studios on the coast, I was just an outside contributor. Griffith knew my name, but when I entered, he almost fell off the Christmas tree. I had my hair down my back, and was dressed like the rube child I was. That was the beginning of my work on the inside. Since I have known something of the technical work, I have been more than ever convinced of the great possibilities of the movies. They have a wonderful future. Now they deal with trivialities. They will outgrow that. Then I guess I'll ease out. Now, I am never bored, but I would be if the movies hadn't come along. I lived in a small California town. I couldn't get away though I threatened my parents with a runaway marriage as a means of seeing the world. I had read every book in the town library. When I had read all the English books, I learned French and German, so as to read the few foreign books that the library contained. It's no credit to me if I am well read. My reading has helped me in my writing, though I read not for information nor for amusement, but as Flaubert counsels in one of his letters, I read to live. That a subtitle and scenario writer who has grown up with the movies should know Voltaire and Flaubert is surprising. But then Miss Luce is not the conventional moving picture subject for an interview. End of The Handwriting on the Screen by Carl Schmidt.